Hello everybody, my name is Graham Carter and I'm the illustrator of The Story Thief and I'll show you a bit to you now. Olive was rather a shy girl. She rarely left the house, except to visit the library in Craggy Bay with her dad and borrow books. Olive loved books. They were returning home from their latest trip when SPUSH! One of her books fell overboard and sank down, down, down into the murky depths, where woke a strange creature. What is this beautiful thing? The creature wondered. And what are you supposed to do with it? Wear it? Eat it? Bash it? Sniffing more of the curious things, he followed them to find out. The trail led him to a glowing light high above the town. Inside, he could see many more of the strange things. The little people treated each one like a precious treasure, and it made him more curious than ever. In her room, it was Olive's favourite part of the day, story time with Dad. What would they become tonight? Fearless pirates, famous detectives, daring explorers. As for Dad read, the creature watched. He was astonished to see how happy the strange thing made Olive. He just had to have it. So, quick as a flash, yoink! He snatched poor Olive's book away. Story thief, cried Olive. But the creature had already gone. Later that night, the jolly old lighthouse keeper was enjoying his latest romance novel. When, <sighs> yoink! The story thief struck again. The same thing happened night after night, until every single book in town had been stolen. The story thief even took books from other animals. Poetry from puffins, fables from foxes, even cookbooks from crabs who made delicious muffins. The terrible book burglary left the islanders angry and upset, but nobody was brave enough to do anything about it, except for Olive. It was time to use all the things she'd found in the stories. She would become a pirate detective explorer track down the story thief and get all the books back herself. Down in his cave, the story thief still couldn't work out how these strange things made everyone so happy. He tried building with them, he tried balancing under them, he even tried sleeping on them, which was a disaster. And while the story thief sulked, while he rode the seas like a daring pirate, she searched for clues like a famous detective and brave strange new lands like a fearless explorer. Until at last, she found the books. There was just one problem, the giant octopus. Remembering her storybook heroes, Olive summed up all her courage. Don't you know it's wrong to steal? Books are treasures and their stories are for everyone to share. To her surprise, the thief was scared of her. Olive felt a bit sorry for him. Do you like books? she asked. He peeked out from the pile he was hiding under. I love reading books, said Olive. So she picked one up, which just so happened to be her missing library book, and began to read. Slowly, Octopus crept closer to Olive getting to be scared as she read story after story. It felt like magic. Octopus finally knew how precious books were. How would the townsfolk ever forgive his thievery? But Olive had a cunning plan. Back home the islanders were wondering if they'd ever see their treasured books ever again. And they suddenly heard a terrific rumbling sound coming from the sea. 
Books ahoy! cried Pirate Olive, as Captain Octopus steered a ship made of a million treasures into dock. The islanders gasped. <gasps> Their beloved books were back! And when Olive explained why he had taken them, and how sorry he was, everyone agreed to give Octopus a second chance. From that moment on, Octopus fitted well into life on the island. He held with chores, he listened to stories, he even found time for reading lessons with Olive. And the more he read, the bigger his ideas got. Eventually, Olive and Octopus were ready to share their new idea with everyone. The Story Ship. People would come from far and wide to hear their amazing tales of adventure. No longer the story thief, Octopus was now the storyteller. The best one ever. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy the story.